Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you so much for joining our call today. Um, we've got lots of people on the call, had lots of really fun things shared as we were just getting warmed up before we started the recording. And uh, I um, chose the subject of teaching moments today. Um, gratitude for teaching moments. And you know, those of you who are here on the call, you know that there are, um, uh, there were probably about 10 or 15 things that were shared that to me kind of fit in that category. So I'm excited to see what we get to learn from that. I'm going to set a timer for 90 seconds. And uh, if this is your first time on the call, when we do a 90 second private silent meditation and um, you just focus on this gratitude for teaching moments today and write down whatever comes to you on uh, that subject. And this is your own personal inspiration about teaching moments, gratitude for teaching moments. And then after this 90 seconds, then we'll open it up for some shares. So again, just welcome everyone. Um, thank you for being here today with us, whether you're here live or on the, the podcast. And uh, we'll look forward to what we get to learn after this private meditation. So 90 seconds, gratitude for teaching moments, writing down whatever comes to you. Begin. Okay. The um, teaching moment that I had yesterday, I was helping my daughter move some furniture into her new house and I stubbed my toe. I wasn't able to look where I was going and I'm not fam as familiar, you know, with this new, because it's a new house. I wasn't familiar with the step pattern. And there was a step where I thought it was flat and I stubbed my toe and I was carrying this heavy bookcase. Um, she was on the other end and I was on um, just one end of it. And I have never had this happen to me before because I've always been pretty strong um, and always exercised, but I have not had a regular exercise routine for the past several months and I've never had this happen to me before. I, I didn't drop it, but I had to, I slowly just sunk down and I seriously was just like, I can't hold it. And um, so I just let it kind of sink down to the ground and just barely, you know, let it down really soft because I didn't want to scratch it on the cement. Um, but it was just a, an evidence um, for me that I am weaker than I was. 
And uh, the thought that came to me here in our 90 second meditation was that fear is a good reason to begin. Um, it's love is a, a motivation that is more long term. Fear only motivates for the first little bit, but it is a good motivator to begin. And I experienced a little bit of fear yesterday, just thinking, oh my gosh, I have never experienced myself being weak like that. So um, I um, realized that I need to, I do need to get to get. I've been thinking about it for a long time and now it's time to actually do something about it. And um, I also feel like that it's important for me to have something beyond just the beginning that is more love motivated to, to really help me to stay focused. And as I just kind of closed my eyes and just thought about what, you know, would be a long-term love motivation. It's so that I can continue to serve longer in my life in integrity that if my body is not in integrity if my spirit and body are not aligned then i'm not going to be able to serve at the highest capacity that i want to and that really helped me to think of something beyond just you know getting started with exercise it's, it means more than just getting my body into shape so that's what i got um, who else has something that they would like to share i would love to share okay thanks Tammy. So I had um, a really amazing teaching moment with my kids yesterday. Um, I It was really stormy outside here yesterday. Um, I felt that I really needed to, to talk to them about the things that I've been learning from you, Eileen, and from, from the content from the last master class and so we went outside for a little bit and just stood there in the strong winds and felt the winds and then we came back in and we were talking about storms and um as soon as i was done testifying to them of the power that they have within themselves to calm whatever storm is in their life i looked up out our front room window and the storm was completely calm and gone. Mm -hmm. And my son, I said, I said, JP, did you see that? And he, his face just lit up. He was beaming. He said, yeah, I saw a mom. And I said, Heavenly Father is helping you. He's helping me teach you. And it was just a very powerful teaching moment and one I will be forever grateful for. Oh, thank you, Tammy. Um, I'm just, as you can tell, this is really touching me emotionally because you're not the first one that shared with me that that last masterclass that we did, harnessing the power of Christ um, to calm every storm, has um, been a catalyst for teaching moments for children. And I'm just so grateful that you guys are, that everybody is receiving what, um, what they need out of these master classes. And if you are um, not familiar with the master classes, please reach out to me and I'll send you links to them. I started these in June. And they're so powerful. And I just share what I'm inspired to share. Um, the 21 day challenge that we're doing on the Lord's way to wealth. Um, Facebook group is the master class for this month. And that's where all these master classes are going to be hosted from this point forward is on that Lord's way to wealth public group. So if you're not a member of that, you can join there and, and uh, connect with me. Thank you, Tammy, so much. So powerful. Who else? I'll share. Um, teaching moments. I had a ton of teaching moments yesterday because uh, I had a friend invite me to play pickleball, and it wasn't anything what I imagined. So before I went, I actually watched a video that told me a little bit what to expect. It's, it was just a lot of fun, but I was receiving teaching moments from everyone that I played with. Um, and it was 
a bit overwhelming. I was like, there's a lot of rules. Um, and I was just like, I had a lot of limiting beliefs coming up. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to remember all of this and just getting the ball over the net and just staying out of the, what they call the kitchen. And um, <laughs> that there was also some limiting beliefs that came up around um, uh, well, I, a phrase that I've caught myself saying a lot is I just really don't push myself. It's like, this was fun. I learned a lot. I don't know if this is something I'll ever do again, but it was a great experience, but there were a lot of teaching moments within that two and a half hours that we played and it, it was a lot of fun, but they're like, I hope you come back. And I'm like, I don't know if I will or not. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, awesome. but it was a lot of fun and it was, it was really, and my friend that went, she's like, I said, what do you love about this? She said, I love everything about this. And I was like, I don't know if I love this yet. I didn't want a single turn. <laughs> <And then> I'm, <laughs> but, but it was a lot of fun and there were a lot of teaching moments and there was a lot to digest um, and, and internalize. And it was really fun meeting new people. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know if I'll go back or not. <laughs> so yeah. I'm yeah. still learning. I think that's typical of teaching moments, isn't it? You know, when we're in the process of learning, when we get feedback from other people or something, or learning a new game, learning a new language, learning a new skill, you know, whatever it is, it is kind of, and even me going into exercising again, I know I'm going to have some soreness. I know there's going to be some uncomfortable moments. It's like, I don't know if I want to go back and do that again, but yeah, it's, um, it's really beautiful to have those opportunities to learn new things and to um, just let those uh, lessons kind of um, gestate and deciding if we want to continue forward or not. Thank you. Tyree. So there have been so many teaching moments for me as well. Uh, in From your master class, I have recognized that Heavenly Father has given me tools and giving me these teaching these opportunities to learn and also to teach my children, but I have not taken them. And so there's this book that someone told me about a year ago and I knew it was good and I knew it was in alignment with what I wanted to do, but I couldn't get myself to read it. And so I started a group that I started reading this book to just so that I would be accountable. So I would get through, so I'd get through it. And I'm only 150 pages in that I read in the last week, but it's, completely changed the way I see our family and the way I see my role as a parent. And it talks about how creating a steady and consistent home where everyone has an opportunity through family meetings to share and keeping and having these things in place so that there's this consistency and, and these rules so that we can learn to self-govern. And, and she talks about how we start with synthetic uh, synthetic consequences to teach little children these, these to teach children the concept of consequences. And then as they get older, then you slowly transition to natural consequences and how important that the home is the safe place, the safest place to learn. And so I have realized that I haven't been keeping my eyes on Christ and I've, and what an opportunity it is for me to learn how to govern myself better so that I am responding to whatever they do with calmness so that I'm calm. The storm inside of me is calm so that they don't have that storm inside themselves and so that they can calm that storm and and respond to any situation appropriately. Oh, beautiful, thank you. I wanna comment on a couple things that you said. Um, I remember when I was trying to finish my book, The Seven Gateways, it just seemed like I just was like, I can't even you know, take time to write. And um, I started a group. You said you started a group to read to because you needed this <laughs> to read this book and you had to kind of create an accountability for yourself. Um, so the other people were holding you accountable and I did the same thing. I created a group. I think there was about 10 women and it actually started on this gratitude call. There were like 10, uh, I think they were all women who wanted to write. And I was like, okay, we're going to write for, 
you know, you decide how many minutes a day you're going to write and we'll text each other when we get our time done. And so I started that group to hold me accountable and I was able to finish my book that way. And I, I just think that's a really powerful principle instead of like hiring account, an accountability partner or something like that, that you just start an accountability group and that, you know, you all kind of hold each other accountable. I think that's how Weight Watchers started. So um, I, thought, I think that's a really um, powerful principle to um, allow us to go through these teaching moments a little bit easier and learn. And then the other thought that I wanted to add um, to what you said on, um, you know, teaching kids like consequences, first of all, synthetic consequences and then natural consequences, also adding that word rewards, um, creating synthetic rewards and then natural rewards too, because when we follow through and we're committed and we're consistent and steady, like you said, there are natural rewards that happen with that as well. Who else? love to share thanks phil i love how you this morning you said you talked about fear being a motivator mm -hmm. and you talked about love being a motivator and fear is fear is like what happens if i don't mm -hmm. or what's going to happen if i don't or i have to do this or else mm -hmm. or or like anyway but um but love is a little different love Love and the self-talk says, it says, um, I do this for me. Mm -hmm. I do this for them. I, I'm doing this because um, I want to build me. I want to have this experience. And, and that, that love is, is way more long lasting than the fear of what happens if I don't. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, I just wanted to, to just talk, uh, just validate that. And then I had a teaching moment this morning about letting go. I was running this morning and about one and a half miles in, my body told me that I needed a, I needed to go use the restroom. <laughs> and, uh, and I was looking around and I could see Harmon's, the light where Harmon's is up there. And it was about four blocks away. And I thought if I could just make it to Harmon's, I'm going to be okay. And as I was going, it got more and more intense. And I thought, I don't know if I'm going to make it. <laughs> and when I finally got to Harmon's, then um, it wasn't open yet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked around looking for a solution. And, I, and there were lights around inside. And I was just like, I just kind of pushed the door open. There was somebody standing there. And I said, I am so sorry. But I... I can use your restroom. <laughs> I'm dying here. And they say, yeah, come on in, you know, and I went in there. But the lesson that I learned is that sometimes I hold on to things that are stored mm. and eventually it become my total focus. Mm -hmm. And eventually, like I, I lost, I don't even remember that last half mile or quarter mile or whatever. I, <laughs> I like all I could remember is that I needed to let something go. And, and I think that that was a lesson I learned this morning about letting go. Awesome. <laughs> I love that. And, you know, I think that, that there is a, a kind of an analogy that can be drawn, lots of analogies that can be drawn there. But one that thought that I thought of was when you said, I don't even remember that last, you know, four blocks or whatever, that last mile, we don't remember when the urgency, when that sense of urgency is so much and, and, you know, sometimes there's a little fear in there, but a lot of, but most of the time that urgency really comes when we find the love, you know, when we care so much about ourselves and, um, others making sure that, you know, we accomplish whatever it is that we want to. It's like, we don't even remember the, um, all the uncomfortableness just completely goes away. We just kind of forget about that because we're, our eyes are so focused on the target. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to add one more thing quick. Uh -huh. I think when we learn to govern ourselves and when we learn to reckon, we teach our children to govern themselves and love themselves for where they are. It creates this beautiful synergy in our community because we, because we all have such important missions if the people that are on this earth right now are powerful, strong, 
spirits and we all have an important work to do. And so when we learn to truly govern ourselves and govern our thoughts, how powerful that is. And when, just like Phil was talking about, we can recognize, oh, that's something I need to let go. And because we have that power to self-govern and tell ourselves no when it's appropriate or tell ourselves yes or whatever it is, we have that power to create and to, to attract the people that we need to create with when we have that part of self-govern. Awesome. I love that. And in learning self-government, we also sort of mirror that with other people. You know, we almost like expect other people to self-govern themselves too. And so it kind of takes away the judgment that we might have of other people. I think there's some real, real power in that. Um, a lot of times, you know, when we think about self-government or whatever, when we think about government, in general, it feels like an oppression. You know, it feels like, ah, uh, now I'm not free. You know, I don't, I can't do what I want to do. But really in that self-government, you know, where we recognize um, the consistency, you know, that we can create within our own lives and predictability by self-government, that we really do free ourselves to be able to receive so much more and accomplish so much more. Thanks, Tyree. Scott. It reminded me of the jar full of um, rocks, pebbles, sands, and water mm -hmm. of priorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard someone recently talk about how if we, you know, the scenario that was taught by uh, Covey, Stephen Covey, that, mm -hmm. you know, you got to put the big rocks in priorities first in our life. And then we can take care of pebbles and sand if we get to it. But if we don't take care of the pebbles at some time, they will become urgent rocks, mm -hmm. but they're only this, you know, the size of importance initially as a pebble. And, uh, boy, I've, I've put off things and, uh, now they become urgent kind of like Phil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but then we're running around, and losing focus because now it becomes uh, a challenge to, because oftentimes there's a lot more pebbles in life. Yeah. If I remember right, those pebbles were like things that are important, but they're not urgent right now. Yeah. Like, but they can become urgent yes. if put off too long. Yes. It, or it would be something like saying, I love you to my spouse. It's not urgent that I say that, but it's definitely important that I say that. And if I don't get around to it ever, then it can become urgent. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, might be kind of fun for you to post. I know there's tons of stuff on the internet about that. Um, but if you'd like to post that in the Breakthrough with Gratitude group, just in case there's some people, Scott, that are maybe not as old as us and <laughs> haven't, haven't read his, is it is the seven habits, I think, of highly effective people that that was in. Um, deep tea. Um, so it's evening here. Uh, I'm in India. Our gratitude call because later after the call I've, I've, I'm supposed to meet uh, someone uh, outside and I'm supposed to pick some books on Buddhism and I had to get done with that spiritual practice today I cannot do it tomorrow because I'm following that challenge and it's supposed to be uh, you know uh, to be done like uh, in a follow-up so each practice has to be done every day and and I was just doing that and someone just walked in my room and I was really frustrated because you need to be uh, really alone and uh, have your private time while you're doing that because then I get distracted and then I flipped out and then I was kind of screaming at my family and things like that and I was in a real bad mood and uh, I was actually going to ca tell that girl uh, like message her saying that you know probably I'll come and pick uh, pick those Buddhism books tomorrow and then I just had a teaching moment uh, uh, all of a sudden uh, thinking that this is the old self like this is the old mm. the, like who would just be in a bad mood and then you know just sulk over it and then you know 
just sulk over it and i was like no if i want to i had a teaching moment that if i want to become a newer self or the new me i will have to make a i will have to make a different choice or i will have to act differently uh that i would i would usually have or do so that was my teaching moment for today so what uh i intend to still meet that call post this gratitude call. awesome awesome thank you so glad that you um saw some new something new in there thank you that's a good lesson for all of us have to become someone new we have to make a different choice thank you let's go ahead and um, take a deep breath And as we shift into our permission process, I invite you to just be aware of all of these teaching moments that have been shared and maybe new things that you have learned based on someone else's teaching moment. And this uh, advice of to become a new self, we need to make a different choice. And that's what the permission process is all about. So as we move into this, just be open to becoming new open to making a different choice. And just allow yourself right now in this moment as you're connecting with your highest source of information, um, listening for additional teaching moments, additional teaching, divine tutoring that is available to you right now. And just feeling gratitude for this new information that's coming to you. And if there is a limiting belief that is also attached to that new information, that's maybe not allowing you to receive it, or you're worried about implementing it, or whatever it is, whatever that limiting belief might be, just notice it and write that down. And know that, um, just as Tyree has mentioned, there are natural consequences that are attached to every thought, every belief, every action. There is a natural uh, outcome that happens. And with a limiting belief, because it is limiting, there will be a natural consequence. There will be a natural cost associated with that. So just be aware of what that natural cost is that is attached to that limiting belief. And if you don't like that consequence, now's the time for you to give yourself permission to choose something new. And all you have to do to claim that right to give yourself permission to choose something new is just say yes. Yes. Awesome. So go ahead and now if you are ready to give yourself permission to choose something new, choose some new beliefs. Take uh, that old new belief and craft some new words around that limiting belief that will take the place of it, that will give you the option for something new to be created. Turn that uh, limiting belief into something more positive. And allow those new beliefs to uh, just flood your mind and your heart and your soul so that as you're in this space of new learning where you've had this uh, divine tutoring, allow those new beliefs to give you the faith to step forward and to continue forward and be maintained Just realized I was muted. Go ahead and take one more deep breath. And in this new space where you have these new beliefs that are allowing you to stay consistent with this new information that you've received, 
what is the one most important thing that you could do today that will actually give you physical evidence of these new beliefs that will give you something solid that you can hold on to that says, yes, I am doing this. I am moving forward. I am becoming a new person. I am being consistent. What's the one most important thing? What's your inspired shortcut today to being consistent in this new divine tutoring that you've received? And in a moment, I'm going to open it up for, we'll have time for maybe one share today. And uh, I'll, I also want to just offer my services to anyone who's feeling like they need some extra support or accountability. Um, just reach out to me on askwileen.com. That will take you directly to my calendar and you can schedule a 15 minute call with me. Love to have a 15 minute free mentoring session with you and just uh, see what we can See what we can find that will really help to serve you in moving forward with what you've learned today. Um, who has something that they would like to share? I wonder how she talks about in that book, the power of calm and how powerful cal being calm is. And I realized that I don't have, you've talked about your personal path of integrity mm -hmm. and following that personal path of integrity a lot. And I realized that I don't fully understand. I don't even know if I, I need to work on that concept some more. And so that is part of my action step today. Awesome. Thank you. That sounds great. If you'd like some support with that, you can schedule a 15 minute call with me. Thanks. Thanks, Tyree. Get time for maybe one more share. I'll share. Thanks, Melinda. Um, a few things uh, just um, about the natural consequences and natural rewards that's so important um, in finding and understanding that counterfeit. Um, through a class I was taking, it, it, we were taught that when you do punishment and reward on your children, it can create a selfishness of what's going to happen to me if I do or if I don't and what am I going to get if I do and I love the and so just easing that balance into that na learning that natural consequence and reward of I do this because because I love and mm -hmm. you know I, and I do this because I choose right and how Tyree's talking about um, learning that self-government just is so important and also I was thinking about, um, this has been a concept, I think, with many mentors in my life right now. So I think that um, that's a teaching moment in itself. But how about storms and, and about calm and storms? And um, just recently, another mentor of mine was talking about um, the storm and how the eye of the storm is the most peaceful part of that storm. And so thinking about your words and how keeping your eyes on Christ is the most peaceful part of that storm. Mm -hmm. So I just think of Christ is the eye of the storm. Mm, and that eyes he's on just Christ, peace eye of the storm. There. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And so for me, I feel like those teaching moments, especially this year, I know that 2020 has been a rough year for many people, but I, I have just loved this year. And I just feel like those moments, those teaching moments are so tender and just evidence of God's love for us. And as we, we choose our speed in which we follow him and that exercise and strength, and strengthens our faith in him these the moments do that for us and give us the chance to check in to love and be gentle with ourselves and come to know ourselves more as we journey through this life beautiful thank you melinda i'm so grateful that you shared today um to it's just a wonderful way to to close our call i um had the thought that there is a higher law um, there's a higher way of living than 
just, you know, acting out of, you know, the consequence and the reward. And it's just, it, I'm doing this or I am this, or I'm, you know, taking this action or making this choice or whatever, just because it's who I am that there is no thought to the action, you know, to the reward or the consequence. It's like the true flow of abundance. When I give, I am immediately paid. There's no like giving because something might happen in the future or doing because something might happen in the future. It's this is who I am and I'm doing it because this is who I am. And I'm, I'm receiving at the same time as I'm giving. And I, I just, that is like, to me, just the highest way of being. It's, it's true charity. It's the way that Christ lived. So thank you. I just love all of you. I appreciate everything that has been shared. This has been really tender for me, this call. So I just really um, love all of you and your willingness to share your thoughts. Um, I'm going to make sure that that masterclass is posted in the blog. Um, if you ever want to go back and look at any of the archives, um, it's searchable. There's a little search bar too. So you can type in a word, um, that will bring up some of the past, you know, recordings that, that have that subject and just go to wileenbenson.com slash blog. And that will, um, take you to the archives of all the, you know, of course you can go to any of the popular plat uh, podcast platforms as well. But if you want it, you know, to be searchable and to um, be able to find those uh, past calls that are really powerful for you, that's a great place to go. And I'll, I'll make sure that that um, link to the masterclass, the Harnessing the Power of Christ is in today's, today's blog post. Thanks, everybody. We will look forward to being back together tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.